where the extra space comes into account. Um, but I mean, seven hundred dollars is yeah. just. And like, I looked up the next big craze game that's coming out this year. You know, Call of Duty Black Ops Six, mm-hmm. and that game is supposedly going to be three hundred and ten gigabytes. Yeah. 310 gigabytes for mid, huh? That is crazy. Yeah. You can fit six of those games on there. That's it. Hello and welcome to level 116 of the Thoughts and Players podcast, the gaming podcast with bold takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy here with my compadre. David. What up? How are you doing this fine evening? Doing all right. How about you? I am doing fair. I am I will say I'm doing fair. It's the right word. Fair. Ladies and gentlemen, chickens, okay. ducks, and hens. We hope you're doing fair or better whenever you're listening to us. Morning, noon, evening, or night. Dusk or dawn. Um, anywhere you're at, if you're in your car, if you're you know, in a bus, wee woo, wee woo. oh, look out! Right, from everywhere, from high and low, from the windows to the wall to the whatever drips down your whatever. We hope Maybe that even uh, on your high low. There you go. Wherever you are, wherever you may be, we hope we hope you we hope, we hope you we find you well. Um, level 116, we got some stories that broke that are related to some topics or a topic, really an overarching topic that we want to get into. So, um, I'm excited for our discussion on that. I think we're going to have, I think you're going to hear some pretty hot takes. You talk about, we say, we, we say bold takes and those strings attached. I think you're going to hear some bold takes this evening. Um, but before we get there, let's start a little less bold or maybe more bold. With the games that we've been playing, um, I can start. Or if David, you want to go? How are you yeah, feeling? I'll uh, I'll make it quick and simple. Okay. Uh, Pokemon Go. Uh, they released the new Dynamax thing, so been working on that. Mm-hmm. It's kind of annoying because you're essentially catching the same Pokemon right now. That just has the three original starters mm-hmm. around with Wulu and I forget what the squirrel's name is. But, like, right now, those are the only five that you can Dynamax. But, like, if you have a perfect one and stuff already, you have to do that again. Okay. So, that's kind of annoying. Um, and besides that, just a lot of uh, TFT, the finals, and Apex. Okay. Okay. Nice. I got you. I got simple. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. How is the with with that new release? I think you had talked about before. There's like they introduced kind of a newish type of Pokedex type thing, right? Like there's like more slots you have to fill in. Yes, they uh, released the newest set of starters last yeah. two weeks ago. Now I think it is. Okay. Okay. I mean, so how how have you been going on that journey? How's that been doing? How how how's that been going? Have you feel like you've been progressing with your catches? Filling it up. Yeah, so I've been playing quite a bit, and if you do PvP, mm-hmm. the stats that you want are completely different than if you're doing, like, raids and stuff, because in that scenario, you just want the highest stats as possible. Like, you want perfect Pokemon. But in PvP, at least in the Great League and the Ultra Leagues, uh, you want a different set of stats for your Pokemon, and it's usually, most of the time, your attack is zero, your defense and your HP are like at 15-15 or 14-14, mm-hmm. usually somewhere in that ballpark. But uh, one of the new starters, I can't remember their names, I think it's Score Bunny is the fire starter. I somehow caught the number one stats for the Ultra League, I think it was like zero fifteen fourteen or something like that. And I always check the stats. There's a site I go on, PVPIV is what I search in Google, and there's this site. You okay. can put in the Pokemon, and it tells you the best stats 
and blah 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 blah. And I caught the best one for Ultra League. I was like, heck yeah, that usually never happens. I usually get like the thirtieth or the sixth or so that that was pretty cool. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, let's see here. For me, in regards to uh, games I've been playing, uh, I, I have arrived. I have completed my expedition of Rome. Mm-hmm. Um, How'd that go? It went good. There's, I have a true, st- I have a true ending for my character, which is I became the first emperor of Rome. Uh, but I also had the opportunity to also save at a certain point, make a couple of other decisions, and get some other endings. You can get different endings. Um, and so there's also other decisions I made way earlier in the game um, that I can't change because I didn't do any save points at those particular points right. within the game. So I'll, I won't know what that's like. But um, it was interesting to have that ending and then be able to experience a bunch of other ones. So... That was really cool. I think when it's all said and done, I probably between the game that I kind of false started and then completing this one, I think I've booked in a little bit over 60 and a half hours in that game. Uh, So yeah, a lot of time in it. Some of that obviously some of that was obviously spent in a a pause menu, but you know (laughs) it is what it is. Uh, So I got through that um, and yeah, I had that kind of feeling of what do I do now? Where do I go now? It's kind of the same feeling I had when I got right. done with uh, Final Fantasy 16. What do I play now? So I decided to go back to and give some more time to mm-hmm. EA Sports College Football oh, 25. Unexpected. And I played uh, two. I, I think I no, I didn't. I played one offensive drive and I said that I'm done. I'm bored. I can't do this. <laughs> So I don't know where I'm going to do with that. I got to figure it out. Um, I played a little bit of Big Ambitions. I want to actually play that more. So that'll probably be a game I put some more time into. But I think the next game I want to commit to, because you need to kind of like, you know, clean your palate. And I want to clean my palate with something that's uniquely different. So I have in my possession, I've owned it for a while, a PS4 version of Mafia 3. Um, I have installed that on my PS5, which if you have a PS4 version of it, and you install it, if you have the hard disk version, and you install it on your PS5, it actually installs the definitive edition version of it on your PlayStation 5, which is really neat. So I plan on getting into that, because I love the Mafia series. I played a little bit of it before, and it seemed like something I could potentially get into. It is a, you know, GTA-ish, whatever clone, if you want to call it that. Um, I remember when I played it before, a lot of people were saying, you know what's a better game? You know what's a game just like this? But it's better as Godfather 2. And so I was like, oh, okay, cool. So then I played and beat Godfather 2. So now I'm going to give this a try and see how long I see how long it happens. Maybe I play the whole game through and beat it. From what I read, it's about a 30-something hour game. Maybe I play Dang, and beat it. You've been Maybe I don't. Long games lately. All games are long. I'm trying to I, I if I can pick the short ones, I would. All games are long. It's like movies. I can't I can't find a movie under two hours nowadays. If I could, Isn't I would just insane? watch those. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been playing a little bit of that. Like I said, played a little bit of big ambitions. Um, so that's pretty much what I've been playing. Wrapped up a game, beat it, happy to have beaten it. Um, part of me wouldn't mind going back and checking it out later on at some point. I might revisit it. Um, but I think I'm done with it for a good minute. And uh sense. yeah, but I'm happy to have beat a game because now I can get another game and not feel as guilty about it. So that's always great. That's the way it goes. Yeah. But uh yeah, that's that's it for me when I've been playing. Pretty short and simple. Well not maybe not as short, but pretty simple. It's just three games. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean with that out the way, I guess let's let's get into the topic. Um and uh I think if you want to take it away first with like kind of like your angle on it, you know, we can talk about that and then kind of, you know, a, a slightly different angle, I think, of the same problem that we're seeing. Okay. So yeah. the topic, essentially, it's not the, you know, direct title. Companies suck. Mm, yes. 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 So what I want to talk about is Sony. They just said that they are releasing the PS5 Pro. 
Yes, it will be available. Was it November seventh? Is that is that when it's supposed to be available? I remember the November part. I don't remember the day part. So yeah. you are probably correct. Yeah, I'll I'll try to double check and make sure. But keep going. Yeah. So it has a seven hundred dollar tag. It does. Right, and that is literally just for the system with no drive. Yes. yes. You can buy a drive separate if you want it, and you can buy a stand separate if you want it. So what it sounds to me is I don't know who made this PlayStation. Is it Sony or is it Apple? Is you it know, they're, they're, they're taking after Apple. Hey, here's a phone. Doesn't come with a charger. Doesn't come with this. Gotta, yeah. gotta, gotta pay extra. Yeah. Like, come on. There's yep. so many people that are fanboys of every company. It's like, why at this point? Well, you're, you're lo- we're, we should be losing people at this point. Well, we t- you talk about fanboys. This is another example of, and I've said this before, about how there's an obvious media skew towards propping up and helping PlayStation. Because, like... I'm I'm seeing these freaking articles and these videos out there and this stuff and they're like they're like for one they're like hey either they're like either I see either a you know the upgrade of seven hundred dollars if you actually think about it is actually worth it because this is how much a graphics card is and it's like okay well a graphics card prices are inflated and b uh, graphics cards go into computers that do uh, that do yeah, more that's... things than a console that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like do you I, like do you know what I can comparison. do you know what I can do on a computer? Develop a video game. I can't do that on a freaking PlayStation Five. I can play one, but I can't develop one. You know what I'm saying? And two, like I can develop a game on a computer. I can't develop a game on a PlayStation. I can write it. I can write a novel on a computer. I can't write a novel on a PlayStation. There's other utilizations you can do with a computer that you can't do with it, right? Um. And then the other one that I love, this is one that I love, because these people are clever, of carrying water, is they'll say, hey, well, you know, if you had just for inflation, the PlayStation 3 was actually more expensive than the PlayStation 5 Pro. And it's like, you know what? That's true. But the PlayStation 3 came out in, like, 2006. The last time I checked, it's 2024. What the F right. do I care if adjusted for inflation, the, the PlayStation 3 was more than the PlayStation 5 Pro. The PlayStation 5 Pro is coming out now. We're in a we're in a or heading towards a soft recession now. We're coming out of the back end of a pandemic now. And, pe- and people have had accessibility issues with the PlayStation 5 now, not in 2003 or 6 or whenever the hell that other place that other PlayStation came out. What does that matter? Why even bring that up? So, I mean, you know, yeah, just a couple but, things. I, I was mentioning fanboys because, like, if you keep doing this stuff, yes. you're you're gonna lose your fanboys. Yeah, it becomes it, it becomes a little bit harder to again, like these these are this is evidence of them hard at work. But you can see how ridiculous they sound. You're gonna have people who are not as in the cult as them. Like you said, they're gonna be they're gonna be like, dude, this is ridiculous. Like, I don't know what to do. Um, I mean, Sony, it helps Sony that there's another aspect to this that we'll also cover later that I think kind of helps insulate them with a lot of their mistakes they've been making. Mm-hmm. But you're right. You kind of lose you lose more people as you kind of present ridiculous things like this. Right. Yeah. And so I was I was reading some comments and stuff, and they were like saying this 700 price tag is a foreshadow of the next gen being a grand for a system. And I couldn't even imagine. I I would not spend a grand on the PS6 or the Xbox 54927 third. Yeah. I don't... What? Well, looks, I mean, for one thing, unfortunately, David, you're that's because you're not an idiot, which means you also probably don't play sports games. So this this is this is the issue. This is the issue. Is Is that you have either fanboys or people that you know this this idea, this sentiment seems to be growing that consoles should be in the same price range or price space as a PC, and that's just incorrect. There's just so many other extra 
there's so many other limitations and extra costs associated with console gaming gaming that isn't part of PC gaming as to why there's a there's a price difference. Right. Yeah, and, and if you're someone that plays games, the most affordable way for you to play a game has always been through console. You're pricing out the main people that kind of gaming was originally intended for, especially modern gaming, is that I can't afford a one thousand twelve hundred fifteen hundred dollar PC, but I can't afford a two three four hundred dollar system. And if you're saying that, well, these aren't gonna, they need to be more in comparison with these other with these PCs. Eventually, you're pricing them out. And because all these companies are so quick to not support previous gen hardware, they're going to be left in the dust super quick. Like yeah. the speed that developers and publishers abandoned the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One for now, that's only going to speed up. It's only going to get, they're going to be like, hey, like as soon as a new system comes out, they're going to be like, hey, it's only for next gen hardware. We aren't doing anything for original hardware. And that's just not sustainable. People have right. less money, they have less expendable money. People are getting comparatively not as enriched as they once were. One one of the big selling points for PS2, the best selling system pretty much ever, it had backwards compatibility. Yes. I know a, all the people that I knew uh, that had PS2s played a lot of the PS1 games on it, too. They yes. didn't just leave the games in the past with the PlayStation. No, they still played them. That was and that was the biggest. You're talking about that being the biggest thing for PlayStation Two. That was also the biggest thing for PlayStation Three when it launched. Yeah, first so that was gen. backwards compatible. The first ones that came out, remember they had That's PlayStation the Twos. Yeah, they had PS Twos built into them. You can play your entire PS Two uh, thing right here on on your PlayStation. That was another selling point, right? Um, they eventually got rid of that, and and it's just, I mean, you know, it's it's. But if we're talking specifically here. For of all these companies, PlayStation doing this is the most on brand. They have been for the longest, the most, greedy, the most anti consumer in their practices. So, this is on brand for PlayStation, you know. It just it, it really sucks to see, you know, yeah, because like, like growing up, I wouldn't have been able to play video games at this point, right? You know, even, even. When I lived with my father, who just like bought us whatever we wanted, like even he had a cap, right? You know, I he he didn't mind buying the the PS2. What, what was it like, one hundred and fifty bucks or something? I don't even remember. It was yeah. not that expensive. Of yeah. course, it was expensive. It's a whole new system, right? But it was affordable. Yes, much more affordable comparatively. It was not a car payment for a brand new car. Right. And yeah. now these prices are getting astronomically high. Yes. And they're just constricting the games that you can play on them. They're just so concerned with making sure you're playing the newest and latest games, probably because of all the microtransactions and stuff like that. Like, you, the you're not going to get a lot of microtransaction sales on like really old games or none at all because most of them don't have those. So if you keep everyone updated and playing the latest and greatest, all these micro like they're just looking to make the most money. Right. There's also the thing of too, and I, and I can't remember. I don't know if people are really aware. Like, there's not that many like PlayStation Five like this is the gen PlayStation 5 first-party games. There's not a lot. They haven't made a lot. There's maybe 10 to 11 games, right? Um, and so when they had their presentation, their 11-minute presentation, a lot of the games they were showing, except for maybe like Spider-Man 2, were games that were released at minimum a year ago. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like if you're, yeah. you're, sh like you're showing me Horizon Forbidden West, and it's like they came out in like like didn't that come out in like twenty one or twenty like like you know what I'm saying like you don't have a lot of things a lot of what people are playing on PlayStation Five are actually PlayStation Four games, right? And PlayStation Four games run crazy good on the PS Five, so it's like you know what is the incentive? They talked about there being they've added sixty seven percent increase in GPU power processing, um, so it can do like you know so it can run stuff. 
we talked about before. Didn't they say that this the, the PS5 was supposed to run 8K with no problem? Where's 8K? That hasn't even happened. Like, like people can't like, even afford 8K TVs. Right. Like, but it's like, what is this for? You know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't understand. They, they talked about the main thing I took away from that presentation is that like, well, you know how you have to pick, you have to pick between fidelity mode and performance mode. Well, now you ain't gotta. And I'm like, okay, uh, okay. I now haven't... there's a more consistent target of 60 frames per second. Okay, that's nothing. I can. I'm pretty sure I can hit. Uh, I can hit 60 frame per per second without a. Seven hundred dollar graphics card. I'm pretty sure I can. You know, um, it's just I don't, I don't get it. Uh, uh, but I mean, I do get it. It's Sony. It's it's what they're putting out there. I think you mentioned before. Or I'm not sure if you mentioned. It's seven hundred dollars. Like you said, they're doing the Apple route. Stand isn't included. The stand isn't included. Right. You have to buy. Right. You have to. You have to spend an additional. What is it? Uh, what was it? Is it eighty dollars? Is the stand? What is the stand like? Maybe forty Something. twenty. 40? They. Yeah. The thing I saw, they said if you were to buy the PS5 Pro and the stand and the disk drive, you're paying well over eight hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have a disk drive. I'm trying to think. Is the hard drive one at a one terabyte hard drive now? I haven't seen what it was actually. I, I like. I was hoping that might be a selling point. Yeah, I know that he, the original the original one, if you remember, it came with like eight hundred gigabytes, something like that. Um, and so I'm I'm trying to think here of like it has the Zen two processor in it. Um, yeah, bigger GPU. They're saying it's the the GPU equivalent of a, like an AMD Radeon RX six six sixty eight hundred. Um, I'm trying to figure out what the what I got brought up says. It comes with a two terabyte. Two terabyte. Okay. For some reason, yeah, I was trying to figure out if it was a one terabyte or two terabyte. Because I know they were also doing, they, they were releasing a SKU that had a one terabyte because the original one is like an 800 gigabyte, not quite. And before we were talking about how the comparatively between like that and the Series X, that the Series X had more hard drive space. So right. two terabytes. All right. I mean, yeah, like you said, it's well over $800. When you're grabbing the stand and the disk drive, I mean, to me, the idea doesn't have a. It doesn't have a what? It doesn't have a stand. What am I supposed to do with it? Just get it and just let it lay it on its side, flop, I guess. Lay it on its side. Let it flop on the ground or on my on my TV stand or whatever, because it doesn't come with a stand. Yeah, and the two terabyte. That's not too bad. That is a good start, but. The size of these games, well, it yeah, almost it, doesn't even matter. Well, here's the thing, because one of the things they talked about was that they've also concentrated on like ray tracing. So I'm thinking the two terabyte is going to be for the for the games they dictate to um, increase texture and graphic packages. I think that's where a lot of that space is going to go towards. Mm -hmm. So instead of the texture graphic package being, I don't know. 40 gigs is going to be 65 gigs or something like that. If you, you want to think about it in that simplest of terms, I think that's where the extra space comes into account. Um, but I mean, $700 is yeah. just. And like, I looked up the next big craze game that's coming out this year, you know, Call of Duty, Black Ops 6. Mm -hmm. And that game is supposedly going to be 310 gigabytes. Yeah. 310 gigabytes for mid, huh? That is crazy. Yeah. You can fit six of those games on there. That's it. Yeah, that's true. Obviously, not every game is going to be 300 gigabytes, but you, you kind of get it. Like, that is absurd. Yeah, it is. Um, and ba like I said, again, based on the idea that even there's, though they're more, they're way more accessible. People have also had a problem just getting the base PS5. Can I just, yeah, I, I still barely ever see it in stores. Yeah. I'll see maybe one if they have one. Yeah. Typically what happens is that when you have these kind of mid, these mid gen 
recycles or redesigns is that they slot into the previous pri- the previous price and the original one gets discounted. That's right. usually what happens. They haven't done that. There has been no price decrease for PS5. No, the original and, one is still the same price. And the controllers have gone up five bucks without them saying anything. It was just like, well, oh, five bucks, no one's going to notice, no one's going to care. And yeah. then the prices of the PF- PS5 have just generally increased anyways because of the scarcity of them. Yes. It's crazy. And I saw that the UK is going to have to spend more than the 700 because of the currency difference. Or like, I heard like, if you're in Australia, over $1,000 for this freaking thing. Over $1,000 Australian for a PlayStation. No, thank you. Absolutely not. Yeah. Insane. Insane. I, I, I wonder if there's like a map that you can search for like PS5 users or whatever. And it, it, can, and it shows like a little light for all the PS5 users. But like when the Pro comes out, see PS5 Pro and then... <laughs> There's none in Australia. It's just dark. That, right. Right. That, that would be exactly. Funny. Exactly. But like you said, I mean, there's people out here. I've heard people are like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get it. I'm going to grab it. I love my PlayStation 5. And I'm going to see a, at the most, 45% increase in, in playability. And it's probably, honestly, it's probably on some freaking, it's probably The Last of Us Remastered or Last of Us Part 2. Right. Like a, like a PlayStation 4 version of it or something. More than likely. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where the uplift is. Right. I haven't heard any complaints of the games running poorly on the regular PS5. Yeah, I mean, they all run to console... They, they all run the console standards, right? Which is, we're going to give you 4K30. We're going to tell you we can run 4K60, but we're going to run 4K30, and then we're going to sell you a $700 mid-cycle thing that will, again, not consistently run 4K60. Um, because, again, they say this can run it in targets... With a, with, it can do 4K with a target of 60 frames per second. You saying a target does not mean it does not. You're saying it runs. It's a different saying it targets 60 frames per second versus saying that it runs at at least 60 frames per second. Right. And That's, when we talk a lot about PC gaming, we're talking about games running at a minimum of 60 frames per second. Right. Quite the opposite. Yeah. And uh, what was I going to say? Um, dang. What was I going to say? It's lost. Well, take a, take a minute to get it back. Yeah, I was, I was just wanting to add, this. there's also a possible, it, you know, they, again, and he talked about, like, you can get rid of this choice of fidelity or performance. Well, what if I don't want to do that? What if it, it can run it at 4K60, but I prefer to go to performance mode because I want to run it at 80 or 90 hertz, right? Right. I want my games to run well, especially if I'm playing something like Call of Duty or something. Right. You know, I want the least amount of problems as possible. Yeah. And I remember what I was going to say. So the Xbox One, right? The original OG first gen. One eventually, of the eventually the games that they were releasing that couldn't keep up with with them. Correct. You know, I, I've played at Apex even on the Xbox One and. It is not great. And just yeah. regular Xbox One games in general, towards the end of the cycle, the first gen was having issues. So I understand why, you know, they released a newer one. I forgot what it's called. One what X or S or whatever. The One X? Yeah. Yeah. It, that makes sense, you know, because now it can play the games that were pushing the standard first gen, you know? It was mm-hmm. giving it a run for its money. But well, this isn't. There, yeah, it's getting better, but for what? There's no issues right now. Yeah. And with as few, you know, first party PS5 games as you have, that's pushing the hardware anyway. And if you're already, and we had reports last year, I think, or at least early this year, of Sony's probably already a couple years. If this is a mid life cycle and we're in 2024, that means that we're two to three years away of them unveiling the PS6. Yeah. So. What are you going to do? You're going to give them $700 now and then give them $800 in a couple of years or whatever. It's like, hey, it don't, it don't make no sense. Um, and, I mean, kind of like you were saying, I mean, Microsoft has their whole issue of hardware, which doesn't make any sense. Um, because at least, at least with PlayStation, whether you use the all-digital version or the physical version with the disc, you can play, you can run their games. 
Xbox is having an issue with some developers running games because developers can't make their games run on the Series S because it's so underpowered. Right. So they're having issues with getting games to their platform because of that. Um, and it's crazy them being a computer company as well. I, I'm. Um, I mean, we can we can save it. I mean, I might have. I got some things to say about Microsoft. Heck yeah, man. Uh, but. Yeah, as far as let, let's see here, is there anything else we want to explore with this PS5 news? This PS5 Pro. I just, it's too, it's a greedy gotcha. It is. It reeks. It feels. It feels dirty. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care about any of these influencers or these media people that are carrying water for Sony, saying that oh, if you look good, if you if you take into account for inflation, the PS3 was actually more expensive. Well, I'm sorry. Was that is that what was just announced? Did they just announce an unveil the PlayStation 3? No, it was a PlayStation 5 Pro that they unveiled what we're talking about right now. That's $700. I don't care that the PlayStation 3 is theoretically $763 now by comparison. What does that right. even mean? It, this thing, it, it, this, do I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I mean, am I freaking, am I, you know, Henry Kissinger? Is this economics? What are we talking about here? <laughs> like, like, you know, like, this is ridiculous. But I'm sorry, do you have I just, something else you wanted to add? No, I, I think that was it. As I say, uh, we can start knocking down Xbox if you want. Okay. I mean, let me just say up front. I mean, I'll say this up front before I guess introduce a topic. I am convinced that Xbox is ran by people who do not know what they're doing. I believe I I I believe that it has been it has been unveiled as crystal clear as ever. If there was any doubt, Xbox has people running that do not know what they're doing. So um we mentioned this before, we've talked about it before, that uh, Xbox was incorporating a change to their Xbox Game Pass subscription service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they are going away with the just base Xbox Game Pass for console, Xbox Game Pass just for PC, and I believe they are setting up a tier of either Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which has already existed, which combines uh, the Game Pass for your PC and your console. That is going from $16.99 to $19.99. And then there is uh, Xbox Game Pass Standard, which is, again, going away with just the console version or just the PC. I think maybe just the console version. Um, and instead of it being $10.99, which has been, it is $14.99. What were some of the things that this standard tier introduced with the increase in price? Well, you get no more day one releases. That's the first thing. One of the one of the main That's values the biggest thing that have been Game hit, Pass. It was one of the premium. It was the it was the value that was advertised. That was the was selling that, point. Was that you get Xbox games, brand new Xbox games day one. Um, that is no longer the the thing that you can do. And furthermore, it's actually been revealed that there's actually about forty to fifty some odd games um, that you no longer have access to with standard tier. So, for instance, I'll just break this down for the good people out there. If you happen to be, I will say right now, someone who has taken advantage of Game Pass console, such as myself, and for the past several months, you know, you're like, you know what? I'm one of 12 people that really enjoy Starfield, and I'm playing the crap out of it. Well, guess what, toots? You don't get Starfield no more. <laughs> Starfield is no longer accessible on this standard tier, Okay. If you're saying, oh, hey, you know, I was really I was really gung-ho about them acquiring Activision Blizzard and Diablo 4 was on there, and now I'll be able to play Diablo 4. Diablo 4, another selected title that is removed and you cannot play on there. Um, so not only do you get day one releases, who knows when you'll there'll be some select games that you will not have access to. Now, how will you know that you don't have access to them? You won't know until you know. That's how it works. Okay, that's just um, that's delusional. Um, so whenever whenever they unveil a new game like Avowed, instead of them saying available on Xbox Game Pass, they'll have to say available on Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. That's how they'll have to say it. Okay, because that's the difference of it. Um, we've talked before. I'm not sure if it's well established based upon different conversations that Phil Spencer has said and all these different things. They're kind of, they've reached kind of their maxes in regards to Xbox Game Pass subscriptions. They have started to release games on the PlayStation 5, and they'll release more. Um, 
The hardware sales, they don't discuss them anymore because they've been low. Xbox is very, is very firmly, very firmly in third place. See, we talk so much about these other ones, people kind of almost forget about Nintendo a little bit. And Nintendo's never really in a lot of a topic of discussion, but yes, Xbox is getting beat soundly by Nintendo. And their mobile gaming thing, their mobile gaming uh, console that I repeat, cannot play games at 1080p. It is getting beat by that. Yes. I, I must reiterate that. Okay. Well, um, we have to hand it to Nintendo. Besides them being very crappy towards their customers with, you yes. know, uh, ROMs and uh, I don't know, stuff they put on YouTube, you know, we have a lot of cease and desist. Mm-hmm. They're they're not that bad. They're like, hey, here's the system. You know, what? How much is the the switch right now? Three hundred bucks. Maybe three hundred, three fifty. I don't know. I don't know yeah, if they've for the OLED. Up the price? Have they ever dropped the right. price of the switch? I, I don't. I, I don't know. I think the light is two hundred or two fifty. Okay, yeah. But I mean, either way, it it is affordable. It has tons and tons of games. Like we've said before, they're always just off on the side doing their own thing. It's witchery. They're not even fighting. They're just like, ah, you two are beating each other up. We're over here yeah. fishing. Nintendo is off to the side committing sorcery and selling its soul to yeah. somehow be able to do all the things it still does. And Nintendo has the second most anti-consumer practices. They never have, uh, they haven't had for a while any kind of console that pushes technology in a traditional sense. And yet they're crushing it. They're not just doing well, they are crushing it. Um, Xbox with its buffoonery and buffoment and all these other things have suddenly found themselves in third place. Uh, and they are now making this change with Game Pass that bottom lines or dollar cents being considered makes their platform and their games less less accessible. By nature, it does. By the right. fact that it costs more, it's less accessible. It's just plus and minuses. Nothing else to do with, with ideas or culture or whether they deserve it or not. They are making, by this action, their self less accessible. And you would think that a company that is in third place would try to make itself more accessible and not less. Um, It was also kind of announced, not along with this, almost, it kind of feels like, is that Xbox has also... um laying off another 650 employees. You said it was worldwide, right? Yes, worldwide. Worldwide. So anybody can get hit. 3% of their global workforce, I think is what I read, but about 650 employees. Um, You've had games like Avowed and some other ones get, you know, uh, um, delayed, but Phil, Phil Spencer said with his latest round of layoffs that no games are getting canceled. Which, of course, means one thing, the gaming industry's favorite word, crunch. Crunch. Yes. Those who remain shall get crunched into oblivion. Uh, and so, um, yeah, I just want to kind of exa- examine it in the backdrop of Sony's greed, that Xbox has its own greed that feels more like a survivalist or survival survivor's greed. Like it's, we have to find some way to monetize this platform, this subscription service more. But again, you've made yourself less accessible and you're in third place. How do you plan to win? You've invested in X cloud for cloud gaming. No one gives an F about cloud gaming no more. I Isn't that about it from anybody anywhere? The bee's knees four to four to five years ago. Everyone was talking about cloud gaming. In fact, another big company that kind of screws itself a lot in leadership, they created a whole platform about it and then it failed. And I have one of their products and I can't get rid of it. Okay. So <laughs> Google has tried the cloud thing. A long time ago, there was on live. They tried the I don't know if you remember them. They they tried cloud gaming. There's different types of things like that. It's not working. No one cares about it. So you have a venture that you invested a lot of energy and money into. That's not working. What else you got? You got Xbox Game Anywhere, right? Well, um, if I'm looking at everything you got right now, you're, you're basically if everything you're doing, you're basically telling me that I don't really need Xbox hardware to play your game. So then what's the benefit of me buying your hardware? Why would I buy an Xbox? Right? Why would I buy it? If I can play it on PC, 
You know what I'm saying? If it actually behooves me more financially to play it on PC, because if I get your standard tier to just play it on console, I don't even get day one games or anything. Like, 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 why, why would I even play it on your box, the Xbox? Why would I play it on your box? Almost. Exactly. You have again. You have one system that you underpowered so much that developers don't want to develop for it because they're like, we can't make our game work on this. This thing is a potato plugged into a potato. We can't make it work on this. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So much of they're Potato avoiding squared. the Series X, which has, you know, power behind it. The Series X, I would I would think, computationally has just as much of that a little bit more power than the PlayStation 5. Um, it, it would work on that, but it's 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 if you make it available for the Series X, you gotta make it available for the Series S. And that's just right. a thing that's not really working. They're, they've done they've announced some uh some some refreshes, not really refreshes, but they announced a one terabyte, I believe, digital version of the Xbox Series X. I think it's the all white one. They unveiled that. Um, so there's an all digital version of the Series X that they are either putting out, they're putting out some time this year, I feel like. Hey, way to do something obvious four years late. I mean, what's going, I mean what, what, what are we doing here? Might as well update the rest what, of the system. If, if that's your most powerful console, why would you not have an all digital version of your most powerful console? Especially the one that has the largest hard drive. You have to wait till 2024 to put out an all digital version of the Series X? That doesn't make any sense. You put this on top of everything else they've had. Of course, we talk about the infamous launch of Redfall and all these other issues they've had. Um, right. And uh, Xbox is trying to exercise some greed and trying to exercise getting some money when they're not really in a position to do so. And it just comes across as like, I mean, I've, I've gone through Reddit and saw all these comments. People are like, I, I've got ultimate. I did a pre-buy thing. I've got ultimate for another six months. When it's, when it's done, I'm just going to let it go. Cause the games that I really play, I'm just going to buy them anyway. It'll be cheaper to buy them in the long run. And I own them. And I'll just make sure that when I buy them, I can, I can buy them and just play them on whatever platform I prefer. Right. Like, I'm not going to do this anymore. This is dumb. This was such an obvious value, great value in gaming. But I've said even a long time ago, it's a great value until you start stacking it with bad games and you start making it inaccessible. It's just perceived value. And it doesn't matter if you acquire Bethesda and whoever else that you acquire. If they put out bad games that aren't impressive and you stack it with bad games and you have bad practices and you make things inaccessible, you make it so that there's no real value to have in your system, it don't matter. It just doesn't matter. And Xbox has seemed to have misstep after misstep after misstep. I mean, you know, for all his work, Phil Spencer he seems like a nice guy. Homie gotta go. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Somebody's gotta they've, fill that slot. They've messed it up at every single... I mean, he did better than, what's his name, Maverick, who, who you know, with the Xbox One came out and says, we don't want you to view this as a gaming system. We want you to view this as the be-all, end-all for your entertainment. It's like, guess what, buddy? You're trying to sell a, a video gaming system. I think video games should be important to it. I mean, just... I mean, like, a little bit? Yeah, maybe? just obvious things. Something. Left and right, they're making missteps. And again, PlayStation and Nintendo are crushing them. And it doesn't help that these that the game that I would... that The, the company that I would argue has probably had for the most part, the most consumer forward or consumer friendly practices is losing the, is, is, is they're, they're dropping the bag. It doesn't help. It, it, you're not helping yourself when you have the best systems and then don't use them efficiently. Yes. 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 I, yeah, hundred percent. So, um, I know we talked about there was before there was a story about Xbox. They're firmly in the development of their next generation of console. I don't know why, uh, but they're doing it. Who knows? They're saying this is going to be the greatest technological leap in video game hardware ever. It won't be, and I don't know why they would try. Uh, and um, yeah, I guess we'll just was, see how. Wasn't that the Atari? <laughs> or the Nintendo? I mean, they all say it, right? You know. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it ends up. How it ends up being because I don't. I don't believe it. I don't trust it. I and me either. And where, where where Sony's Sony's use of its greed is just on brand as Sony being Sony, right? Um, Xbox is Very because much so. because of the position they're in 
comes across Moore's desperation in a bit in and in, in, in a lot of they both moves are tone deaf. Um because outside of comparing them to whatever within like video gaming and what they've done and what they've released in their past pricing or whatever, it's tone deaf to the to the to the times economically. Uh people right. can't people can't afford seven hundred dollar upgrades. Now I, I mean part part of that is on if they can get away with it. I'm also someone that is if they can get away with it, then get away with it. Um I'm not here to say that if I I mean, point blank, just being honest, if you're someone that's in a financial bind where you can't afford to buy a $700 system and buy a $700 system, it's on you being an idiot. Like, them being predatory well, and you being an idiot are two separate things, right? Um, but it's just because they're the ones they're being preyed on doesn't necessarily mean yeah. you have to be preyed on. Uh, um, especially, like, in... Uh, again, another example of care of water carrying. Uh, there were other people that were like, yeah, well, you know... Um, because also, think about it. If you're trading your PlayStation 5 to get a PlayStation 5 Pro, it's about a $200 to $300 upgrade. And it's like, again, this is dumb. That's a, that's a dumb logic. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, those those are completely different topics. It's just a matter of this reeks, this feels dirty. I don't feel this feels just gross. There's something about it that doesn't feel good on both sides. And so... I mean, look, I, now more than ever, and I've, I've understood it in the past, but now more than ever, I get when people say, hey, I'm going PC gaming and I'm never going back. Um, I can have access to games. I can play games that are way older. When I buy those games, I perceivably own them. I don't have to worry about them possibly being backwards compatible. When I want to play online with my friends, I just play online with my friends. I don't have to own, I don't have to pay 60, 80, 120, 140, $200 a year for online membership to play with my friends. Right. Um, and so like I it, it just becomes more of a thing that makes sense when we talk about again if we want to talk about another story that's kind of in tandem in regards to what companies are doing recently Steam talked about them completely restructuring their Steam families um, uh, um, f feature on Steam so that now it's much easier for you to share your Steam library with people that um, you consider are in your family people can play your games right it's kind of like game share with playstation a little bit um See, that's great because but it's, it's awesome it's awesome I wanna you... buy the same games for my son that i already have yeah. and i kind of don't really play yeah you know that yeah. helps a lot percent so you know if you're someone that's you know it just opens up another avenue to play with people and have people access games without it having to be such a big uh, you know, big financial thing. Now, of course, some companies will opt out of it. Of course, 2K opt out of it. Um, Rockstar opt out of it. You know, Ubisoft opted out of it. You know, companies that are typically greedy opted out of it. Those that's are going to seem, yeah, those are on par. Yeah, that's on brand. Um, but yeah, it's it's insane. Yeah, it's just a, it, it's thing. <laughs> uh, I want to go back to the. I'd spot stuff real quick, how you were talking about, you know, if they get away with it and whatever. Like, if they could blame it on inflation, when we all know it's just corporate greed raising the prices of everything. If they just raised the prices a little bit, like you said, they, you know, probably get away with it, not change anything. But the problem is what they're doing with the changes, like you said, there, there's no more day one. They can't play, you know, the 40, 50 games or whatever that they selected for the regular edition game pass and like they're, they're just yeah. digging their grave with that. Yeah. And you can't like you blame said, anyone else. There's a bunch of other things. It's not like, Hey, you can, it's not like Xbox game pass console becomes standard tier, but all the same benefits of console goes to that standard tier. That's not what happened. They deliberately yeah. got rid of things. <laughs> right. And basically saying that instead of you paying, Eleven dollars, you're gonna pay fifteen dollars for less, unless you want everything you had before. But then you got to pay us twenty dollars a month. That's Double where the price. That's where it's like, okay, this is it's it's where greed kicks in, right? Because it's not just we need a little bit more money. We feel like we're good value. You can just give us, you know, a few more a few more dollars. You can get your games and be happy. Um, and yeah, I don't know how well it's going to go for Xbox. I really. Feel like, and I've said before multiple times, I really feel like Xbox is going the way of Sega. It just feels like 
five to seven to ten years from now, there's not going to be an Xbox. Right. And we'll have even less competition in that space. And it's that's really a funny since they like essentially replaced Sega. Ex yeah. You know, it's funny. They've literally put themselves in their shoes. Yeah. They just walked longer. And you know, like get like Google tried to get into that space. It didn't work. Um the biggest concern anyone would have is that, God forbid, Xbox and Microsoft does decide to pull out of that third position, and the person or the company that decides to take that third position is Apple. Because Apple would be poised to do something like that. Then you're talking about three gaming companies that all utilize the most anti-consumer practices possible within the space. So, um, you know, I'm not saying that we got to... I'm not saying... We talk about... like fanboyism i'm not saying you're root for one or root for any of them right um i myself i've always been a little bit more partial to xbox but i just don't like what i perceive to be incompetence and xbox radiates it gloriously and so uh i always have more frustration with them uh but yeah i, I would say xbox get the little little greed thing but it just it smells more of desperation it's, i feel it's more of like we gotta find. We gotta start finding some ways to keep the lights on. Yeah, so, they're, they're squeezing. Yeah, so we gotta squeeze. We gotta squeeze. We got twenty something million people on our subscription service. We gotta squeeze. I know for me, what I'd say uh, coming up soon, very soon, probably next week, Frostpunk Two is coming out. Um, but I'm even getting to a point where I'm like, you know what? I've pretty much identified the games that I would want or be interested in. I think I may give up on this Game Pass thing. And just get the games I want. Right. And just call it a day. Like I said, it'd be cheaper in the long run. Yeah, it'd be cheaper in the long run. And like I've, you know, like one of the things, like I had Game Pass for Manalords. Manalords has been on sale multiple times since this came out. I could have copped it for about two months of Game Pass. Um, there's sometimes I'll find games and play them on Game Pass, but otherwise, and then a lot of times Xbox throws like, their games on sale so much because again. You gotta try to make them work. Your games aren't selling, so yep. yeah, you know, greed, greed, greed. Or as uh, as the gray, I can't remember exactly who said it. Um, as they say, cream cash rules everything around me. Unfortunately, the game industry, the game industry is looking real <laughs> creamy right now. Okay, real creamy. Yeah, I don't like that. Not at all. Was there anything else you wanted to, to add about the Xbox angle on this? It's upsetting. It is. It is. That's all I got. All right. Well, with, with that in the rear view, let's move on to final thoughts so we can offer a final thought about something that's either related or unrelated to this podcast episode. So, who's giving a final thought first? Uh, you can go. Okay, I'll give one. Um, my final thought is um, I've kind of mentioned that I was looking at, you know, Mafia as the next game that I get into. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of reminded of, of like, uh, you know, my partner talks about she reads a lot of books and she kind of talks about when you've experienced a really good book, you get done, you're kind of like, I don't know really where to go next. Right. And so I had that feeling with Expeditions Rome. I had that feeling with Final Fantasy 16. I had that feeling, I think, with Ghost of Tsushima to some extent. Um, and so, yeah, I've been searching and looking, and I'm going to try Mafia. But if Mafia doesn't work, another thing, just going back to the issues of stuff, we talked before about that game Black Myth Wukong. Yep. Which you can play on PC or. PlayStation 5, because it's a time PlayStation 5 exclusive. Part of the issue being that it's hard to develop for the Xbox Series S. Yep, yep, yep. That problem always yep. happens. So that's another game that I might explore. I'm trying to think. I don't have a lot of faith in my, my in Mafia 3 maybe sticking as much as I would want it to. So I'm trying to think of other, other games I can explore that would fill that void. What What about that hospital game? Project Hospital. See, I gotta, here's a, I gotta, I gotta think less. I need I need things where I can think less for a little bit. Oh, that's a real good thinking game. Well, you gotta you gotta, you gotta optimize your hospital layout, right? Right. Yeah. Hey, how much am I gonna charge to get people to clear people? You're, look, you're looking for a numbing game. 
Yeah. So like Mafia Three, okay. you shoot people, you steal cars, your own businesses, but you don't have right. to you don't have to think big about the businesses. It's like, hey, I bought a building, put a speakeasy in it. Ah, right, it's done, right? Like that's it. That's, <laughs> that's all I think. About. I don't have to think about how much am I paying my doctors, how much do I want to charge for gonorrhea treatment. I don't have to think about any of that stuff. That's way. That's oh. way too intense. That's a good point. I'm good point. Playing big ambitions, which has a lot of that thinking too. I'm gonna let that be my thinking game. And I think there I want three to be my kind of just autopilot, dirt, dirt, whatever. I'm dumb game because I can't do I can't do college football anymore. It's just not going to work. So that game yeah. is going to be going away. I don't know. That's what you said last time. Yep, I had to give it one more try. <laughs> I had to give it one more try. But uh, that's my final thought. All right. Uh, my final thought. Let's see. Ooh, okay. Um, went to the Renaissance Fair this past weekend. Okay. And of course, you know things are pricey there because where else are you going to get most of the stuff? Mm-hmm. Obviously nowadays, yeah, online, blah blah blah, whatever. But like that used to be like the place where you get your stuff. Yeah. And two years ago when I went, there was this really nice uh, leather sleeveless like cloak kind of thing okay and i really wanted it it was 300 bucks but they didn't have my size so that's a bummer i was like i'll get it next year i didn't go last year so never even looked but i went and looked this year and they were 600 dollars. woof are you kidding me yeah it's wild man like i understand it's leather and i understand everything has increased in price but a hundred percent. Yeah, here's and here's the thing too, though, and this is going along with it. Every like, there's people out here like we all know that we're we, we, that inflation is crazy right now. People are taking advantage of this. They're saying, ah, everybody knows inflation is going on right now, so I can charge two hundred percent of the price of something. No, inflation's not up two hundred percent. Inflation is up. Reed is at most at most twenty percent. Okay, so you can maybe charge me 20% more. I'd even take 30% more. But when you're like, oh man, inflation, I know this used to be a dollar. And you I know this used to be a dollar ninety-nine. Well, believe it, inflation, man, it's eighty three hundred now. I don't know how it happened. It's like, <laughs> what? And it's like it's, that math is it's not even math right. So I can't believe that that within two years, you're saying basically, right? Yes. Something went from three hundred to six hundred. Yeah, I I saw I found my size. I was like, awesome. I saw the price tag. I said, uh, no, and I walked out. I didn't even look at anything else. Man, I mean, could you imagine if our if our if our income went up at the same multiplication that these other places are charging because it went up with inflation? I mean, you know. I I thought prices were supposed to go were supposed to go up because of minimum wage. Right. That hasn't gone up since 2007. Right. I mean, that's, oh, when we get into that, where people are like, hey, hey, wait a minute. We can't, if we start paying more minimum wage, that you're, when you come to here to get a Big Mac, your Big Mac is going to cost you $27. It's like, that doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense what you're saying. And it won't. Yeah. Okay. It just doesn't make sense. It never will. Yeah. It just won't. Oh, if you like your burger, if you've always wanted a cheap burger, Minimum wage and charging now. I mean, it's going to be crazy. It's like, okay, if that's the case, if that's the case, then tell me why I've been paying at least $10 for a burger from five guys since like 2014. Okay. Right. Because they've been charging pot roast prices for their freaking hamburgers for years. All right. And nothing's raised, nothing's been raised since. What's, what's going on there? You know? Fast food is restaurant prices now. Yes. And restaurant prices are fine dining prices, and um, heck, even groceries now are almost like just restaurant prices. It's, it's pretty pretty scary. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, hey man, I might as well go to a burger joint. Just trying to make some burgers, and it's like, hey, you want to make you want to make just some nice cheap burgers at home? Yeah, fifty dollars. It's like what? <laughs> no, I'm making. I'm making you, you get ten of them though. I don't know. Fifty bucks seems pretty good though. I'm like, yeah, but look at it. It's an eight pack. It's an eight pack. 
Want some hot dogs? We'll give you six pack hot dogs and eight pack hot dog buns. It's like that doesn't even match up. Now I got to get another pack of hot dogs. That is dogs. so annoying. Yeah. Why does one come in at eight and the other one comes in at ten? They want you to buy two of them. They want you to buy two then, of them. Then it still doesn't. They know your OCD. Now I have they, six and twenty. They know your OCD will, take, will, will kick in, and you'll eventually buy enough to where it balances out. That that's what they know. It's too late at that point. Mm-hmm. I'm too mad. Mm-hmm. I feel you. And they're all stale. Yep. I feel you. <laughs> well, that's my final thought. It's good. It's good. Well, that brings us to the end of level 116 of Thoughts and Players Podcast. If you like what you heard, please like, follow, and subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. We are on the Apples and the Overcast and whatever Google uses now, and we are on the Spotify, and we are on whatever Amazon uses now, and we're on I think the Deezer, iHeartRadio, everywhere. Um, you can also follow us on the socials. We're on the Facebook and the Twitter and the uh, uh, Instagram and the TikTok at Thoughts Players. We are also on, of course, YouTube, where we upload video versions of the podcast every week. If you want to support us, there's a couple of ways you can do that. One, you can buy the merch. We've got our Teespring store. Check out our merch there for hats, shirts, um, hoodies. They don't sell pants there, so we don't have any pants. But you should have pants already. If you're walking around and you don't have pants, if you've been walking around with all pants, waiting for us to drop pants, for one, you should be in jail. And uh, number two, that's never going to happen. <laughs> um, and then there's also the Patreon, where we offer three tiers, a two, five, or seven dollar tier, each with different bits of goodies and exclusives. Again, catch the episodes of the... Uh, Game Dev Tycoon playthrough where we're playing as the company Players, I think, Players Inc. And you can follow the journey of the great game dev black guy as he built the greatest game dev studio ever in the history of man. Uh, that is it for me. David, did you have anything else you want to add? Please. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next level. <laughs>